Welcome to an example of integration using partial fraction decomposition. If we take a look at the given integral, we should first verify that basic u substitution won't work. Notice how the denominator is degree two and the numerator is degree one, and therefore we might try to let u equal the denominator of x squared minus four x minus five. Notice if we do this, differential u would be two x minus four times dx, and this does not fit the form of the given integral. So our next strategy will be to perform partial fraction decomposition on this given rational expression. We want to break this down into a sum or difference of fractions that will hopefully be easier to integrate. So we'll forget about the integral for a moment and focus on this rational expression. So the first step will be to factor the denominator. So we'll have the quantity three x plus nine divided by two binomial factors where we have x and x. The factors of negative five that add to negative four would be negative five and positive one. And because we have two distinct linear factors, our partial fractions will be in the form of a constant a divided by the first linear factor plus a constant b divided by the second linear factor. And if we had repeated linear factors, we would follow this pattern here. So going back to our example, this is going to be equal to some constant a divided by the first linear factor of x minus five plus some constant b divided by the second linear factor of x plus one. And now we're going to clear the fractions from this equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCD, which would be the quantity x minus five times the quantity x plus one. Notice on the left side, x minus five over x minus five simplifies to one, and so does x plus one over x plus one, leaving us with three x plus nine equals, and on the right side, notice how this product here, the x minus five would simplify out, leaving us with a times the quantity x plus one, and then for the second product, the x plus one over x plus one simplifies out, leaving us with plus b times the quantity x minus five. This is called the basic equation, and now we're going to solve this for a and b by selecting convenient values of x. Notice how if we select x equals negative one, this product here would be zero, so we'll first choose x equals negative one and perform substitution. So if x is negative one, notice how we would have three times negative one plus nine, that's six, equals, if x is negative one, again, this would be zero, plus b times negative one minus five, that's negative six, so we'd have negative six b. Dividing both sides by negative six, notice how b is equal to negative one. Now to find the value of a, let's select x equals five, Notice when x is five, this product would be zero. So if x equals five, we'd have three times five, that's 15 plus nine, that's 24, equals, this would be a times the quantity five plus one, that's six a. And again, this would be zero. Dividing both sides by six, notice how a is equal to positive four. So now we'll substitute four for a, and negative one for b, which means we can write this integral here as the integral of a divided by x minus five, again a is four, so four divided by the quantity x minus five, plus b divided by the quantity x plus one. Since b is negative one, let's go ahead and write this as minus one divided by the quantity x plus one. The whole point of doing this is that now this should be easier to integrate. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and separate this into two separate integrals. For the first integral, we'll also factor out the four. So we can write this as four times the integral of one divided by the quantity x minus five minus the integral of one divided by the quantity x plus one. And we should recognize this fits the form of the integral of one over u du which is equal to natural log absolute value u plus c. 
So we might be thinking that we need to perform u substitution here, but notice if we let u equal x minus five, differential u is just dx. And therefore the antiderivative would just be four times natural log absolute value u, or absolute value of the quantity x minus five. And similarly, for the second integral, we would just have minus natural log absolute value of the quantity x plus one plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.